Day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to provide a thorough review of the Dell Inspiron 3520 laptop. You can see we haven't opened this one up yet. What we're going to do is unbox it, pull the back off and show you how to do upgrades and repairs very quick. Things like how to change the battery if the battery starts failing in a few years, which is unlikely but possible. The uh, solid state drive, how to change that, how to upgrade the disk change the memory or upgrade the memory, clean the fans, that kind of stuff. All very basic, all very quick. We will also provide some benchmarks and we will then provide a wrap-up review. But the question we're really trying to answer here is, does a super cheap laptop like this thing, this came in after discount, we paid $341 Canadian for this unit. And that is about, let's call it 250 US. And you might think, boy, is a laptop that cheap really worth anything? Is it actually going to function and do what I need? The short answer is it sure will. The longer answer comes as we go through over the spec and we explain what's missing and why you may or may not care about those features and what's in here that might be a bit surprising. Let's get to unboxing this thing right now. So here it is, somebody always wants to see the box. There's nothing on the box. As you can see, just this label gives you a brief uh, description. All right, so let's look at the unit. Nothing interesting on the top or the bottom other than to note that this is made of plastic, not metal. That's something that people sometimes like. This is going to scratch a bit. I don't care for $250 US. Nothing interesting on the front. Uh, on the bottom, just the vent. Uh, that's the air intake and the exhaust. Uh, there's potentially an issue there. If you, if you always have this on your lap, uh, as in the word laptop, and you wear a lot of fuzzy clothes, you can fuzz up your fan and uh, we'll show you how to fix that. It's pretty easy. Uh, and then let's go through the ports. So on this side, we have uh, a uh, card reader and very few people will use that. We have a USB 2 port. So the only thing you're going to want to plug into that is a keyboard, mouse, printer, that kind of thing. Don't plug in anything fast, like, uh, you know, that you want to transfer data from or to, like your phone or uh, USB sticks, uh, yeah, use the other ports. Then you've got your power connector, AC in. And on the other side, that's where it gets slightly more interesting. You've got two USB 3.2 ports, but these are only Gen 1 ports. They're not the faster Gen 2 ports. And you might ask, oh, we're getting into this numbers game. What's that about? Look, these ports on this side are 10 times faster than the port on the other side, but it's still just five gig per second, which, you know, for most things is just fine. But high speed in today's world, eh, not really. Then you have an HDMI 1.4 port. Uh, very few things require more than 1.4, but if you need 2.0 for some reason, that might be an issue for you, although highly unlikely. Then you have a headphone jack that virtually nobody's going to use as well because this is Bluetooth. You're probably gonna use Bluetooth uh, headset. Uh, let's look at the uh, keyboard and you'll notice it has a number pad. Number pads are always handy. You'll also notice that it is a fairly large screen. This is a 15.6 inch and people get confused by that. It's diagonal. That dimension is, uh, is, the, is what counts. Uh, one of the other things that's missing is this is just a regular webcam. Now this is a 1080p webcam, which is an upgrade from the previous versions of these things. But what it doesn't have is infrared. Why would I want an infrared camera at the top? Well, because you might want to use biometrics and a regular camera can be fooled. So it's not trusted for biometrics. So Microsoft calls their biometric systems Windows Hello and this does not support Windows Hello. Why not? Because it doesn't have an infrared camera. It's got a regular camera. More than enough for most people. It's a full size keyboard. You will have no trouble using them with a large trackpad, left or right mouse click, nothing exciting there. What's missing off of this? It's not a backlit keyboard. That's unfortunate. Is it a big deal? I really like backlit keyboards, but I'm not gonna pay for it. And what's the other thing that's missing on this? Well, it doesn't have a touch screen. Do you care about touch screens? Most people don't. I actually do, but for the purpose of this laptop, which is just sort of an intra office loaner, this is just fine. Now it looks like we're using specialized tools, but this is really just a standard Phillips. Phillips is the star. Pro tip, when you take screws out, don't just throw them in a pile because sometimes they're uh, different sizes. Lay them out on your work surface in the order in which they came out, matching the layout. Now in days of yore, there was what's called a pry point along here where there was a little gap and you could 
uh, pull it up using credit card or something. But the Pride Point days seem to be gone. So what I always look for is something that's already just popped up a bit. Uh, and if it hasn't popped up, just take a card of some sort, any plastic card will do, and just muscle it into the gap. And you'll hear it pop up. There we go. Don't worry, you won't break it. Oh, screw's still in a bit. Now, why did these two screws stay in? Well, that's because they have washers on the back of them. Okay, so now we have the back off. Let's take a look at what's here. Uh, the first thing to note is the battery. If you need to change the battery in the future, it's very easy. You've got what, one screw, two screws, three screws, and a little clip uh, for the connector, which runs out to here to the motherboard. Easy to pull off and easy to change. These are your speakers. You're never going to pull those out. Then you've got your memory. And you can see that this one has a single 8 gig dim in it. Let's pop that out. And to pop them out, you just pry the sides apart and it pops up. You can see this is micron memory. So we'll just pop that back in. If I wanted more memory, I could buy another one and pop it in here. Now it needs to match this one, or I can just replace this with something larger. This unit supports up to 32 gig of RAM. Then you've got your Wi-Fi card. You're never going to upgrade that. This is Wi-Fi AC, which is uh, Wi-Fi Generation 5, the newest is Generation 7. Do you care? No. This is plenty fast enough. In case you're wondering why there's two wires coming off, it's because there's two antennas. One goes under the keyboard and the other goes under the screen so that no matter which way you have it, it's working. The next thing is the SSD. This is your hard drive. And your... Now, as you can see, this little slot, this is an M.2 slot as it's called, uh, currently has in it a 2230, which is 22 millimeters wide and 30 millimeters long, the, the, the card that's in here. That's the your hard drive, your solid state drive, but it supports all the way up to a 2280, which is the normal larger one. So if I wanted to change this 256 gig drive for a two terabyte, easy to do. Take the screw out of the back, pop this out, put the new one in, put it down, put the heat shield uh, over top of it, screw it back down, and you're done. This one came with something quite nice, which is a SATA connection. So I could put a three and a half inch hard drive in here and connect it. They've even included the cable. That's a bit unusual, that doesn't often happen. And what that tells me is that this product is made for global markets. In North America, it's only they're only gonna sell it with the M.2 NVMe drive. But you can add a second drive in as you can see here, no problem at all, super easy. Take these four screws out, plug it in, put the four screws back in, you're done. Now, if you ever have this apart, you are going to want to blow this fan out. People think the CPU is under there, it's not. Your CPU is there, it's called a heat pipe, and that's going to move the heat from the CPU to the fan, and the fan's going to blow it out. So you want to make sure that that fan is clean every time you pull the back off, which you may never do, or you might do once or twice in its life. Pro tip, whenever you've got your screws in, go back and torque them just one more time. I hate using touch pads, so I'm gonna plug in a wireless mouse and I'm gonna plug it into that slow USB 2 slot over on this side. In the latest build of Windows 11, this takes a very long time. Let it sit for 20 minutes, go have a coffee, come back. This ships with Windows 11 Home, and one of the things you can't do if you are a Home user is not use a Microsoft account. So if you go to sign in, uh, yeah, you're in trouble. Uh, the, there's no easy way around it. Uh, with Windows Pro, there is a way around it, but not this one. PIN is better than a password because a PIN is specific to this device. So if I tell you my PIN is 1234, which would be a pretty terrible pin. You can't do anything with it. You have to have physical access to this machine. That's why it's better than a password. These are some other laptops. You can see I've got quite a few I work on. So but let's keep moving. If you didn't want to restore, you could just use set up as a new PC, but I want to restore from this one. Now you'll notice that in this case, it set up my start bar uh, to shift to the left, and it's probably turned off combine, at least I hope it has. Yep, uh, so everything is set up the way I like it, and that's because I imported it. So I'll show you what I change on every single computer I touch. I hate 
the taskbar being in the middle and floating around. So the first thing I do is right click on a blank space, select taskbar settings. I go to search box and I turn it off. It's on hide now. I turn off the task view and the widgets. Then I scroll down to taskbar behaviors, set it to the left and set combine to never. I hate combine. Okay, let's get rid of that. Next thing I do is go into file explorer, click view and go to show and turn on file name extensions. And I always turn on hidden items. You probably don't want to do that. The other thing I do is I really hate this quick access garbage. I just want to go to this PC every time. So how do you do that? Well, it's not hard. Click the three dots, go to options and set it, change it to from home to this PC. There we go. Click OK. And now when I go back to File Explorer, it's going to go here. Those are the big changes to make. Next thing uh, is go take a look at uh, Disk Manager or sorry, Device Manager and make sure everything's okay. Make sure they know what we call bangs, which are the yellow triangle with the exclamation mark in it. Now everything looks fine there. Next thing is a Windows update. Okay, so Windows update needs attention. Yeah, lots of stuff. So download and install, just take it all. Uh, but you wanna go down to advanced options and select, oop, that was just the uh, video driver being updated. So don't worry about that. And select optional updates, except Everything here that doesn't say the word preview. If it says preview, you don't want it. There we go. Download and install. And you can see that Dell has its firmware pushed out through Windows Update, which is nice. You don't have to do anything special with Dell. Now let's take a quick look at Task Manager and see what the CPU is. And you will see that it is a 12th generation. Oh, it says 12th generation right there. I3-1215U. I always like to right click and change that to logical processors. And anyway, what that uh, CPU uh, gets you is two performance cores, which are uh, capable of handling four threads and four efficiency cores. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Look, an efficiency core is just like a uh, moderate level CPU from say 2015, 2016 and an efficiency core can do all of your standard stuff. The performance cores are where the real gains come in. So the bottom line is you can run eight threads at the same time, a gig, it's fine. So there's the information on the SSD, the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi, and the GPU. I turned off the antivirus, so I've rebooted, I've cleared everything that's running, and now we're going to run a benchmark. So looking through here, we can see these are all respectable numbers. Nothing here is shocking. All right, so it's review time. What do we think of the Dell Inspiron 3520 laptop with the Intel i3-1215U CPU? Well, it's actually pretty good. Who's it good for? It's pretty good for, well, let's, let's go over who it's not good for and what, what it's missing. What it's missing. First thing that uh, kind of bothers me that in 2024, 2025, Dell is still producing laptops like this, doesn't have a USB Type-C port, the, you know, it's the round connector. Is that a crisis? Not at this price point, but I would like it. Secondly, same thing with the, uh, with the backlit keyboard. Doesn't cost Dell very much uh, to add that in, just a few dollars, but uh, they are trying to keep the price as low as they can and to differentiate it from other products. So this doesn't have a backlit keyboard. Not a showstopper for me, but I don't. I would prefer the backlit in a big way. But again, not willing to pay for it, so I guess they're right. Uh, next thing is the touchscreen. I love touchscreens. I don't use them all day, but I touch them three, four times a day for one reason or another, and um, I, I would much prefer it. You probably don't care. Next thing, infrared camera. Most people just don't care, especially home users. I care because I'm so used to using it. I sit down at my computer and it just logs me in much better than uh, you know fingerprint scanners or passwords or pins or anything else but it's what it is the other thing it's missing really is a high-end graphics card so this isn't good for gamers if you want and i'm not talking about you know candy crush and you know tetris i'm talking about high-end first person shooter games this is not the right device if that's what you want to do however if you're a student if you're a home user and uh, you're running a small office and you just need a machine to run Word, Excel, PowerPoint, that kind of thing, it's ideal. Now, take note, this is Windows 11 Home, not Windows 11 Professional. So if you are trying to use this in a corporate setting, it's not probably going to be happy because it doesn't have professional, which means you can't join it to a domain. Now, if you don't have a domain, 
and, or you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. It'll be just fine for you. One other group that I should mention this probably isn't great for, which is travelers. This is very thin and very light. Don't get me wrong, not an issue there. But it is a 15.6 inch laptop diagonally uh, and 15.6 inch is not tiny. So if you're a traveler, it may not be the best choice for you. Now I can tell you, I bought this as a loaner for our office exclusively for people traveling, but I expect somebody will complain it's a little bit too large. Oh well, what are you gonna do? We like it, we would buy it again at $250 US, you're not going to beat it. So hey, if you found this video useful, please give us the big thumbs up and subscribe's always appreciated as well. If you have any questions or concerns, you can get a hold of us directly at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca or you can leave a question or comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will because on YouTube, everybody's got an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.